say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's our breath. We're not smoking cigarettes. Welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. It's cold. It is cold. I don't like it. Now, we've been through a snap. You've seen it. Single digits mm -hmm. here in Kentucky. Woo, I'd like no. some more of that. Not. No. You know what? When this happens, you got a few things you have to keep in mind. One is water freezes mm -hmm. when it gets cold. Have you noticed that? Yes, and it's not fun. And we're going to do, you know what we're going to do? Because we do this in real life and we don't think to share it with you. And a lot of you old time farmers know this, but you folks that are just getting started, we know lots of folks who are just starting with sheep. Mm -hmm. They they want to start a farm. Right. They have seen the show and they actually say, hey, where can I get a dog that's already trained to sheep? Where can I get some sheep? Mm -hmm. And they're starting this themselves. It's so cool. I think small time hobby farming is probably at a peak. That's, there's maybe back there. I think small time farming, hobby farming mm -hmm. is probably reaching a place it hasn't reached since the 70s. I mean, people really want to know where the food's coming from. Right. And there's, there comes some of ours right now through the woods. We had our water freezing up and my little ax was over here and I was busting it. And that goes so good until it reaches single yeah. digits and yeah. doesn't reach above freezing today. So we went to, where do we go? Rural King. Rural King. And we got this floating stock tank de-icer, about 25 bucks. Yeah. This thing is a floating deal. So basically it sets in the water and I put one out the other day, but it actually works really well for the mm -hmm. cattle, for the sheep. Right. You don't want to go hauling water out there every day. Right. It's 1250 watts, 120 volts. And it's made by Farm Innovators Inc. And it also has a thermostat on there. It, if, it's, if the water's, you know, below freezing, it works. Right. It doesn't need to work. It cuts Turns itself off. off. Isn't that nice. great? Yeah. It's well worth the money. Right. You think about back and forth, trying to keep bucks, your hose right. hooked up. It's great. It's wonderful. So we like it. Now we're going to do a walk about on the farm today to show you some of the challenges we have with cold weather. Mm -hmm. But while we're doing this, do you notice the smell of smoke on the air? I do. What are you making? The smoker is rolling. That's How about some idea. alligator? Yum. How about some poppers? It's one thing to have jalapeno poppers, you know, out of the oven, right. but smoked? Are you kidding me? Yum. And we're gonna, we got some alligator from our friends down south. We're gonna do something with some alligator tonight in the smoker. And we got two more wonderful recipes after we go see the animals. Right. I don't want to tell them all our secrets. That's right. This one's absolutely, well, all of them are fantastic. Yeah. But and they're, I'm they're, they're a little different. We try to go to, you know, to look up some different right. stuff. So we got some good stuff for you tonight. But right now, one of our other problems is we have pregnant sheep. Yeah, we do. These are there, they're eating a lot. No, no, no. They're, they're pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> now, what happens when they're pregnant in wintertime? You don't want them to have popsicle babies. That's right. And I don't mean to be trite there, but you know, the reality is we really gonna watch them. Right. We're really gonna keep our eye on them. When we see they're getting close, we're gonna put them in the barn. Right. We're gonna have some heat lamps out. We're gonna put some straw down today. We're gonna have an area that we can fence off and separate. As we see our cattle in the background, we're fast approaching the time when we're gonna take Mo, the black Angus brown Swiss mix. Right. It's time for him to go. He's 800 pounds. We have found out how much meat that is. That's right. a couple freezers. Right. So we're going to split this with some of our friends. Mm -hmm. And we've got freezer space available. We have taken five lambs recently. And oh my goodness. Got another freezer. Is that not wonderful? It's delicious. So we got plenty of freezers. So if the apocalypse happens, we're going to pull our meat out and start canning it. We'll be good to go. That's so come right. by. If you need some protein, come to our house. <laughs> But Mo is getting ready to go, and Mojo, on the other hand. I call him Jersey Boy. He is really, he's packing the pounds yeah. on. Now we're going to beef him up. He's getting mama's milk. He's getting the best hay that we can get. And we're going to put a little bit of good non-GMO grain in there. We get that from Baghdad Rollo Mill. That's right. So let's go check with the sheep and show you what we're going to do over there. Water's good. We got one of those down there with the sheep too. So we don't have to get out and bust water that's, that's and good. carry pails. No, no you don't. Good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
All right, now as you can see, our grills are looking fairly heavy. Yes, they now, are. you know what cracks me up is the fact that we had a snow a couple years ago that was, what, 24 inches deep? Yeah. And we thought, oh my goodness, it's five degrees out. It was one of those, and they were jumping, playing. They, love they it. are well equipped to withstand cold temperatures. Right. Not a bit, and, and of course, Milty, no worries. <laughs> but the fur on these animals right here, these dogs. Of course, we have, they have a barn. When it gets real cold, we turn heating lights on, and we have the igloo, the big igloos for the full, dogs, yeah. full of straw. So look, look at the fur on them. Look, and right now it's 20 degrees out. They love this weather. I think yeah. they like it a lot better than the hot weather. All right, now let's go take a look at what we're going to do for the lambs, because it's getting close. You know what? Mama Mia, her son, who is just a young ram. Yeah. We did not cut him. Well, these are hair sheep. Mm -hmm. What that means is, it's just the opposite of what you'd think. They are not wool. You don't take their wool and use it because right. they shed. He is in the process of shedding. So that's the way they look until all that comes out. Now, if they, when they shed in the spring, the birds grab this up. You'll see it in every mm -hmm. daggone bird nest around. But what we're going to do here is basically we'll bribe them in with a bucket of corn. You stand right here and I'll show you how this works. Watch this. All I got to do to get them in this area, we got movable cattle panels. Watch this. Here guys, here guys. And suddenly, we have lots of sheep in here. We'll take that cattle panel, put up there, wire it shut. We're good to go. Heat lamps, we plug them Heat in lamps. when they have babies. Yep. If it's cold. So we are well set for the winter. We've already had our cold, well, I don't know if we've had our coldest nights. It's coming. We've been down to, you know, the single, single digits. Right. Um, even if it goes into minus, we're good to go. Everybody is fat and healthy, and we hope for some more lambs. Again, we processed five of our lambs right. this year. Some of the best eating we've ever had in life. It is. Now, we're going to start doing some more lamb recipes because people seem to be very interested in that. Right. Quick and easy, and if you haven't tried lamb, you absolutely have to do that. I've got an idea. What? You want to go inside where it's I warm? I do. I'm froze. My face is <laughs> Your froze. Your nose is red. I'm freezing. All right, let's go inside and I cook. Guess. We have a potpourri of food and kind yes, of stuff. Yes, we do. We've got all kinds of stuff. Well, the animals are taken care of. Mm -hmm. So all this food, usually we can have them organized per recipe. We've got so many things going on tonight, we're going to uh, just leave everything out. We got more to come too. Right. More stuff to come. But you know, we talked about the smoker. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to utilize that more and more. We use that in our professional endeavors on the side, but we also use it ourselves. And we're finding more and more uses for that. People are asking, hey, I got this new smoker. What am I going to do with it? Todd Horn. Did he get He's one? making those turkeys now. Did he get a smoker? Oh, yeah. Too? Okay. yeah. You know, his wife, Crystal. I think she got it for him for Christmas. Smart girl, his, he'll cook. His daughter had a birthday the other day and she wanted that smoked turkey. Really? So, so now he's gonna <laughs> want some more recipes. So here we have in front of us all this stuff. Where shall we start? Now we recently went to our favorite store in Lexington and got some organic tomatoes. Mm -hmm. That bacon is from Finley Market, which we did a show on. We talked mm -hmm. about the German influence and that market's been open since I think the early 1820s. Right. So we went up there and we went from shop to shop to we shop. We got to shop this time. Yeah, I couldn't get you yeah, out of there. I exactly. had bag loads. What did we get? We got sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. All the bread. Was, was it M's Baker? Yes. And we got olive bread. Olive garlic bread. Yes. Got and actually had lunch meats they cut for us, cheeses. Pastrami, Braunschweiger. Roast beef. Out of uh, chicken livers. Mm -hmm. Oh, we came over the bag. Steaks. Stuff. We got steaks. And we've been putting those <laughs> in our panini press. So that's why. Um, it's okay. It's delicious. Yeah. I need to lose some weight. But anyhow, my mouth is watering thinking about all this stuff we got in front of us. First thing we're going to do, and this is so simple, we're going to take some, we've let our cream cheese get to room temperature, and we've got some mixed cheeses here. We've got some Colby and Monterey Jack mm -hmm. cheese right here, and you can use whatever you want. And a lot of times you can find, I think it's listed under Mexican cheese uh, for tacos and things like that. Just, just any kind of mixed cheese. So now we're just going to take this and press it all together. Oh, can you wait? No, I'm starving. Now, I'm going to set my smoker, you can do 250, you can do 275. Um, and you're going to have to go for about three hours, I would say, maximum. Start checking. When that bacon is crispy and done, 
you're good to go. And it's a little bit colder outside, so I'll probably start checking it at around three hours. So that was just a little handful of mixed cheese to go with that. Now here's how they end up looking. I'm going to show you how to do one of these because earlier you about lost your eyes and throat. Yeah, I was coughing. You're cutting so many jalapenos, but we're just basically going to take that. Man, I'm telling you what, I'm seriously starving. Let me clean that out. And then I'll touch your eyes with that. Uh, I'd rather you not. Now, the great thing about this is after you cook them, you can cook them in the oven too, by the way. Um, if you cook them in the oven on a higher temperature, 350, 375, Again, just cook it till the bacon's done and you're good to go. Because, oh, mm. Now what happens is, even if you get some really stout, really strong uh, peppers. These are. These are. That cooking process and the bacon and all that will kind of take the heat out of that. I can't wait to eat them. So that's all you do. Then you take your piece of bacon, wrap that up. Now this is uncured bacon. And just, there you go. Something a little different. I started looking on Barry's list of stuff that you can get from our Seafood Connection. Right. And I looked, and he said alligator. Now, I love alligator. Obviously, you're not going to get it in Kentucky. Right. But I said, let's get some of this alligator, and let's smoke some alligator. That sounds good, And too. you said, how shall we do that? Mm -hmm. How about, let's put it on skewers. Now, the way to get this thing started, now, who, who doesn't love a, a skewer with mm -hmm. some nice things on yes. it? Summertime, you yes. can grill these or whatever. But smoking alligator meat, are you kidding me? I can't wait. So I made a little brine, a simple brine. And here's what I used, equal parts kosher salt and brown sugar. And this is gonna sound strange, but I poured, I don't know, probably a third of a cup of pickle juice in there. Is that dill? Along with that water. Yeah, dill. Yeah. And then I just put the rest water in there, but, and I've dropped an onion in there too. All right, now we've cut these up and I've brined them overnight. So we're gonna take these out and let them dry out a little bit. You know how you sit around and you think about ideas sometimes and you think, ooh, I've got this idea that would be really cool. So. We were laughing, we were watching Elf, and they were talking about the perfect cup of coffee. That's right. <laughs> so I had in my head this idea, I'm gonna make a gazillion dollars. Why in the world could you not have like a cup, mm -hmm. and a cup that sits on top of that with a little drain hole in the bottom, and you put your filter in there, and you just take it out, and you know, instead of all the mess with the French press, and all that kind of stuff. So you got a little filter, you put a couple scoops of coffee good in there, pour idea. your hot water in there, uh -huh. and boom, you're good to go. I'm gonna make good a idea. gazillion dollars. Somebody. So you have your perfect cup Somebody of coffee. Somebody wired into the chip in my brain. Uh -huh. That's right. That was put in there by the uh, by the Nixon administration uh -huh. back in the 70s. Oh, okay. Yeah, they stole my idea. I'm sorry. They stole my idea. I'm sorry. Now we're not food snobs or coffee snobs or anything like that, and you know, but I gotta tell you what. We got some good quality coffee put in there. Poured the hot water over it. Best cup of coffee that, I've ever you? had. You love it. Now I was bouncing off the wall. You made espresso. I'm sorry. You didn't make coffee. I, I saw mean, I was kind of bouncing. Yeah, you put enough scoops to make a whole pot in your one cup. That's why it's but so it delicious. Good yeah. And stuff. Uh huh. Man, I had, it took me a while to come down <laughs> from that one. So, anyhow, this is so simple. Here's what we're going to do. I love these. You've heard me talk about these. These are deli sliced jalapeno peppers, just pickled mm -hmm. peppers. We're just going to take a piece of alligator. Put on a skewer. With a pepper. With a pepper. And an onion. Let's keep and going. Follow that process. This is, we kind of do this with dove meat too. Yeah, we do. But alligator has got that nice texture. It's got a texture that's kind of like turtle if you've ever had turtle. And it really lends itself well to being smoked. It's kind of chewy. I'm anxious oh, it's to try delicious, this. I'm telling you what. So now we're going to wrap that in a piece of bacon. And here's what we've got. Oh my, let's put a little bit of Tony's on that. Pop that in. You have got some good eating. Wait till you taste those jalapenos. I can't wait. Too. tomato cut and knife. That is good. That works nice. And have you ever wanted something fairly quick and easy and you think, oh my goodness, I just don't have the ingredients for that. But how about something that has a wonderful fresh taste? Say you want some fresh tomatoes, some fresh basil, 
Now this is meant to be, I think, for most people, a vegetarian dish, but you know me, I gotta have a little bit of meat in there. That's right. This is so simple. Take you a pie shell, and if you, if you want it deep, you can make it deep. If you want just a regular one, you can do a regular one. How many tomatoes do you think? Three, three, four tomatoes. We're gonna put those in a colander. You need, you gotta figure about that much. These are fairly good sized tomatoes, so I'm gonna say three. Let's see where three gets us. We cut some more, we'll cut some more. So what we're gonna do is basically let those drain from it, let it like, get as much moisture as possible. Let's cut some onions super thin. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. If you'll just hand me some of those things. Look at where we're going here. So simple, so easy. I'm gonna lay a layer of tomatoes. Let's take a little bit of onion, put on here, as you see fit. Just a little bit of dry Italian seasoning. Is your mouth watering? Mm-hmm, I'm starving. A little basil. Yeah. That could be it for you vegetarian types. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. And we're gonna go in here and do a layer of pepperoni. You gotta have meat, don't you? I just do, I just like meat, I'm sorry. So here we are, let's go another layer of tomatoes. Um, quick and easy, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do? Now some little mixed cheeses here. We've got some mozzarella and the same mixture we used earlier, just any kind of cheese that you like. And come back with some fresh Parmesan. Wow. The oven is preheated. We're gonna go about a half hour on this? Yeah, half hour. Because your pie shells, we already cooked that. How beautiful. Beautiful. Let's throw it in. Drop it. All right, now we've got our 10 inch pan out. Because this would normally be a cowboy cooking thing. But it's like but it's six zero. degrees out. Is it six? I thought it was zero. <laughs> it's six, five, somewhere in there. I'm mm. sorry. I'm not going out. I think my Marine Corps training makes me a man. But I'm not that much of a That's man. That's right. Let's have a fire. I'm old. I don't want any part of that. <laughs> but you know what? We have our 10-inch pot, which I've told you before. If you can do it cowboy cooking, you can do it in the oven. Right. That's cast iron. Mm -hmm. It's going in the oven. If it can handle hot coals, it can handle... A little silly old oven. I think a true cowboy, you should walk it up the hill and cook it, and then we'll wait for dinner. I'll tell you what, you've got a cowboy hat. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm a, I'm like a maiden tonight. Look, it was my, yeah. I think, but anyways. Let's just do it. In let's here. cook it in. All right, here's the way we're going to start this. We're going to do it again in the 10-inch pan. It's got the legs on it. We'll just set those in there amongst the uh, rack. We're going to take, oh, I don't know, half an onion and our handy-dandy chopper, which, by the way, you can get from QVC, Bed Bath & Beyond. They're everywhere. Coles. Google it. I love it. It's called a pool chopper. Along with some deli sliced tamed jalapeno peppers. We're going to take one pound of ground beef. We know where that came from. That's right. And one pound of pork. We know where that came from. Much onions? Yep. All this? Yep. Lots of onions. Oh, look at that. We're gonna also take some of the cheese we had left over from our poppers and we're gonna mix that in. Good idea. And an egg. And then we're gonna mix that up with some breadcrumbs. How about salt and pepper too? Oh yeah, I need lots of salt and pepper. Okay, then we're gonna take that, plop Press it in down. the pan. So now again, we got jalapeno peppers, we got some cheese, we have onions, and we're gonna put a little bit of barbecue sauce, then we're gonna put the bacon on. So let yeah. me get a spoon and spread this. This is my homemade brand. And it's a South Carolina, it's got a little vinegar in it. Yeah. A little bit of mustard. Right on top. You know what I'm talking that about? That sounds good. Put that on top, then we'll put bacon over top of that. We're on the countdown, we got six minutes left before our tomato pie is done. So let's get this ready to, as soon as we pull that, we're gonna put this in. Our poppers are gonna be done shortly which should have been our appetizer first, but I want that pie. Let's have that for appetizer, because mm -hmm. I'm starving. All right. That looks amazing. Our cut is just a baby piece. You go ahead, Miss Well, I know I what you think about cheese. I don't want to get in between your cheese. I know, and that big piece of basil looks good, too. <laughs> I want that. I'm, I want it all. That's good. Fresh tomatoes, fresh basil. Cheese, onions. It's kind of like a pizza pie. Mm, I like that. That makes a lot. me really happy. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting around and you're thinking, oh my, I would like a taste of fresh Italian, but I don't have this and I don't have that. Make yourself a pie shell. 
If you got cheese and tomatoes, you're good. Mm. This is really good. Fresh. It's a great appetizer. Miss Farmer, would you like another big honking slice of I that? Would. I would. Love That's some. delicious. It really so is. So we'll turn the cameras off. We'll eat a big slice, and Kelly will probably have two. Yeah, let's hit Larry have a piece. Just let her have a tiny piece. Yeah. Good. Get the smoked flavor. Mm -hmm. I'll eat a bunch of those. Well, the alligator's good. Is that not mm -hmm. delicious? Wow. That texture of that alligator on that smoker, that That's does really wonderful good. things to it, doesn't it? Wow. I could eat a ton of that. It seems that light. That is absolutely del it seems delicious. Seems really light. Look at that. I mean, look at the texture of that. That may be the best smoked wild game I've had in a while. That's really good. In the smoker, I put on around 250, and I went for three hours. So get you some alligator, put it on your new smoker that you got for Christmas, or one that you've had for 100 years. Mmm, 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 mmm. That meatloaf's been in there for an hour. So we're gonna check it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the meat thermometer in it. Okay. Now that's not anything you want. Or it needs to be pink or anything. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go about 160 on that. That's the safe zone on everything. Yeah. And we'll set it out and let it rest for about 15 minutes. But I kind of hardly think about that right now because I'm eating alligator. That's the best alligator I've ever had. It's, it's really good that way. So a little barbecue sauce on yeah, the side. Yeah, we need something to dip it in. You gotta dip your meatloaf. You ready? You know this barbecue sauce that I made here. One of my favorite barbecue sauces I've ever had in Kentucky is from Nose Barbecue. I absolutely love their stuff. So I tried to make something kind of like theirs. You make a good meatloaf. How is it? Really good. Good job. It's like so a barbecue full. meatloaf. I am so full. Now if you want to do this all beef, you can do all beef. Mm -hmm. You can do all pork. Okay, I'm going to read this nice letter from Barry and Phyllis Davidson. Merry Christmas to Tim and Nikki. We want to tell you how much we enjoy Tim Barber's Country Kitchen. We watch it every weekend. You've given us so many ideas that we've implemented around our home and in our kitchen. We see you enjoy cooking with cast iron, so do we. The one drawback we found was the awkwardness of using traditional pot holders. We remembered our grandmothers using something that made to slip over the handles. So they sat down and came up with something that we thought resembled what was in our memories. We call them skillet handle covers and we use them every time we use our cast iron. I hope you find them as useful as we do. We don't even remove them from the handles during cute, the cooking they? time. She made four of those. We hope you enjoy the hand crocheted blanket. This is amazing. We made for you. And all I got to say is we are wow. not worthy. Isn't that beautiful? It is. It's huge. I'm not even holding it all the way. We thought you might like a cozy blanket for the cold winter nights in your cabin. We hope. I'm cozy now. We hope we get to enjoy many more years of your fantastic program. Have a blessed holiday season. And it's said, P.S., we think your show should be an hour long. Yeah, Kelly. I was right with him up to that point. I say two hours. <laughs> You know what? Thank wow. you so much, Barry. This is, nice. this is going in the cabin, on the couch, and be it will nice. be a, a, a throw when we need it. That's right. Very nice. And you know what? I'm about to pop. <laughs> so at this time, I guess we should talk about the fact that we've got billions of things out there that people are looking at on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Every time we mm -hmm. have a new video, it'll come right to you. If you want to find these recipes, you can do that by going to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I've been there. I Actually, too. some of the stuff that I forget because we don't ever measure right. it. I go back and look, how much did I put in that time? I pull it up too. You can look right there. Our Facebook page. Easy. Mm -hmm. How would you be our Facebook friend? What do you got to do? Go to Facebook. And do what? Hit like. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook That's page. Right. We want you on there to be our friend. That was an amazing half hour. We squeezed a lot of stuff in there. We got our critters all ready for the zero degree of weather coming. Yep. And at this point in time. It's time for a nap. Before I take my nap, it's all about. <laughs> good times. Good friends. And good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Marmor's Country Kitchen. Uh, if we survive all this food. That's a bite. Yeah, I'm agreeing. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to C.
C-K-Y, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, 